Well, leaders, welcome back with us again to another episode of Business Leadership Ex uh, Experts. You're going to love the guests that I have today. You've got to hear the Demo Perez story. This is a gentleman who started his own business. He is a business owner. He's knee deep in what is happening in logistics, in the supply chain. It's a story I found fascinating. You got to hear this story because it's it's fascinating on, on several, on a few different levels. Demo, please introduce yourself to our audience. Hello, uh, my name is Demostenes Perez. Uh, all my friends uh, call me Demo uh, since I was a kid. Uh, Demo is a, a long Greek name, uh, but I'm from Panama. Uh, born and raised in Panama, and um, I've been here all my life. Um, so uh, I'm uh, about to reach uh, the fifth floor, the fifth floor. So uh, I will be 50 years old very soon. Ah, uh, okay, a young, a young 50. Yeah. So, uh, Demo, explain to us a, a little bit before you got to IPL. You, you didn't you didn't make this leap overnight. It no. took some years of experience. Give us a little bit of build up to what you were before you were doing before IPL. You guys got to hear this. Yeah. Well, um, I started on the logistics industry back in 1997. Um, I started working. Uh, for a real relative that won a contract with um, Federal Express. Oh. So this guy had to run a, uh, a service for FedEx as a vendor and, and he didn't have the resources. So he called all his friends, family. So I came, jumped uh, with him and uh, uh, I, I didn't live in Panama City at the time also. I was in, a, in another place uh, where I, I grew up. So uh, I started just helping him for a couple of weeks and I ended up uh, getting in, into loving this industry. Um, I, uh, I, 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 like a year after we started, uh, that company was taken out of business and FedEx decided to go directly and they mm -hmm. hired me. So um, uh, I, I started um, like being a uh, station manager for FedEx uh, and uh, in, in a place that, you know, very interesting places, the Cologne Free Trade Zone. So that was my be begin in the uh, in the logistic industry. Pretty interesting, and and, and I spent uh, working for this group. Uh, Passed a lot of uh, different changes into the uh, history of the business. Uh, that company that used to be the FedEx partner turns to be DHL partner. So I ended up uh, running DHL operations, and then after that, I I ended up running. Um, real distribution centers uh, for my company and also for DHL. Uh, what I did the last 15 years as the general manager of this group was to develop a business and, and those businesses are related to global companies that use Panama as their real distribution center and, and fulfillment center to serve Latin America. And Latin mm -hmm. America means for us uh, from Mexico to, let's say, from Guatemala to uh, Chile, because Brazil and its outcome are served directly. So it's a group of countries that uh, that are served from Panama. So I became an expert of um, developing the business for these uh, 4,500 companies and uh, you know global companies in general, uh, because they need to understand how to work here. So. Uh, during that period, I think I uh, I worked with in you know, over two hundred projects uh, for global companies. Of course, not all of them uh, wow. became into a, a, a realization, but uh, was a huge experience, Mike, because mm -hmm. I had the chance to learn from companies that are in all areas of business, from pharmaceutical to industrial to high tech to healthcare to beverage to clothing, auto parts, would you name it. Uh, wow. uh, mining equipment, and and, and, and and the good thing for me as an experience was to deal with all these global companies. I have global contacts all over because uh, 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 I had to meet executives from from China to Brazil, from Africa to Paris. So people from all over the world, uh, I had the chance to interact with them and become friends of many of them, and still we are friends. So uh, it was a beautiful experience, Mike. Uh, mm. and, 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 and at that time, uh, I had to run this company. Uh, I have a, 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 a staff, you know, uh, we built warehouse. Uh, we have, I don't know, 250 
uh, team members. Uh, so beautiful experience. Wow. So, so you were working with your, your prior employer. Yeah. You built this company up, obviously, to be yeah. a, a key player in the Panama Free Zone. And we're going to come back, folks, yeah. to explain a little bit about this strange and odd term for those of you who don't know it, Panama Free Zone. We're going to come back. Demo, Demo's going to explain that to us a little bit. So Demo, you're at the, the it sounds like you're at the height of your profession. You've, yeah. you, you've built a team up to 250, you, you know, you, you helped them start, you know, the distribution. Um, I'm going to venture to say, once you've reached that level, Nimmo, that's, there's some, there's some security there from income to benefits to, you're the king of your own world. Yeah. And then, and then all of a sudden you catch the entrepreneur bug. <laughs> <laughs> when most people are thinking, I'm going to set it on cruise control and stay in the comfort zone, tell us a little bit what pushed you into starting IPL. If you could first tell us, what does IPL stand for? IPL are the, um, the initials of the last name of my partner, Daniel. His last name is Asa, and mine is Perez, IP, IP Logistics. So uh, that's IP and, and the group because uh, IP a group because we are, our vision is pretty big. So uh, to have a, a, a group of companies. So uh, we, we, we started with that. So, so yes, I, I was on the peak of my, of my uh, professional career at the time. Uh, I was running a very successful company uh, financially wise. I have a beautiful team, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, all the benefits, good salary, you know, uh, assistant, all what you want to be, to have wow. in, in a position like this. But I, I started last years in, in that position, I started to feel that I was needing something else. I, mm. want, I, I wanted to grow the company. I wanted to export the company. I want to, and, 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 and you know, I, I was not the owner. Uh, so, uh, and, and the board, the owner of the company, they have a, a different plan. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I started to, to feel that need because I was I, I, I grew up in a in a in a business uh, family, in an entrepreneurial family from my grandfather, so my father, everybody. So I had this dream to have mm. my own business. Right. So um, I, many people told me in, in, in times that why you don't build your own thing? You have everything. You have everything. You know, I, I, I hear that many times, but in my internal part, I said, I don't have everything to do that. So I started working uh, for financial purposes with a coach uh, that, that, that ended up being a good friend. And, and this coach, uh, he, he set up a mastermind group hmm. um, with a group okay. of uh, business owners. Actually, I was the only one not business owner on the group. Uh, and, and, uh, and, and he challenged us to, uh, actually, he also did it to set up a stretch goal. Every one of us in the in the in the in the group had to set a stretch goal, and my goal was to build my own company. Right, so we start working, we start meeting uh, 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 frequently, and this he came with the idea: we need to go to a Tony Robbins seminar, the <laughs> unleash, unleash the power within. Uh, at a time, I was a fan of Tony, but uh, never that deep. So he pushed us to Tony Robbins <laughs> to go to Tony Robbins. We 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 bought the the most expensive tickets to be the you know the whole experience. And what what I found out, my friend, is that sitting there in that you know four day seminar, we 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 make all the uh, fire walking, all all the Kool Aid, right? But I learned a lot. I learned okay. and I and I had that breakthrough that Tony said I have it during the during the event. I understood finally the reason why I was not able to be my own my own to to build my own business, and that was fear. Mm. So I learned how to overcome that fear okay. because that was all in my head. I was the only one that didn't believe in my in me to do this. So. Wow. It was a process. So when I came down, uh, when I came back to Panama after seminar. Of course, I keep I, I keep working with the mastermind group. I keep working mm -hmm. uh, with the Tony coaching, uh, Tony Robbins coaching team. So I did a lot, and uh, and 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 a couple of months after that, I I submit my resignation to the uh, to the board. 
Wow. I was going to do it. Yeah, yeah, I was going to do it. Um, I have this, this good friend that uh, he was in a position like mine. Um, he was also looking to, uh, to jump her, his business. He's, he's a little bit older than myself. And, uh, and uh, we, we used to meet a lot in, you know, work related thing. And, and he was in the same position. He wanted to, to do their own thing. So uh, we came together and said, okay, let's do it. And we did it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> kind of crazy. Because, you know, we, 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 we would have uh, started the company. Uh, no bank will give you any, any, any penny for that. Because even though you are who you are. Right. And uh, we learn in the hard way that um, it's not that easy as we used to be when you were this uh, CEO or whatever, right? So, and we didn't know anything about raising money or finding investors, nothing. We were, we didn't have zero experience on that. So we ended up putting our own money, our own savings, our own, uh, you know, our, our, our family uh, 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 savings. <laughs> to, to 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 build the company and uh, and that's how we started. Wow, betting everything. So e- even with your experience in the industry, fifteen years. And, and if we talk about you know the total experience in logistics industry, it's, you're, you're probably closer to 20, 25 years when you take the total experience. Fifteen years with your prior employer, you should have. Absolutely, you'll probably forget more about the logistics and in industries. Probably even in in Panama, you'll probably forget more than what people will ever know. With your experience, why should you be afraid to start your own to start to start your own business? But the way you laid it out is not uncommon to those who have decades of experience and that shift, that mental shift from working for someone. And like you said, you wanted to take the company to another level. And not that they were doing anything wrong. You just had some ideas that you wanted to explore that you thought could work. Now you've got to make that jump, that mental jump to it is now all on me and my partner. And the bank was the first one to tell you, no. <laughs> yeah, it, it, we went to a, a, a number of banks. And all no, say okay, no. a number of banks. First, you got to <laughs> convince yourself. And then you've got to fight through those who might not agree with you. It could be those who are the closest to you, who love you, and they don't want to see you get hurt. So they'll try to prevent you from leaving that comfort zone. Tony Robbins had you walk across some fire. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and during that time, I also, we, we, you know, my, my, my kids are, are grown and, uh, and, and we, we, we meet all the family and, and I explained them exactly the plans of, you know, they, they, they knew about, we were about to lose all our, uh, you know, uh, 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 the benefits of having this, this position. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, this was a family agreement. They say, okay, that do it. This is the thing. So that was pretty helpful. My wife was, she's my, uh, my support. Uh, and she was do it, do it, do it. And, 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 and during all this period, Mike, I also changed a lot on my, on my personal life, on my uh, health uh, uh, practice. During my years in the corporate world, my only principal thing was the company, my job, my job. Mm-hmm. I need to be there early. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I work on weekends, I work on nights, no vacations. You know, I was really mm-hmm. committed. Uh, with that and, and 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 in this process I learned that I was first like I was more important and mm-hmm. today uh, I focus on me and that is re- uh, uh, giving results to the business so it's different so all, all right. the things that this I learned in this in that seminar I have applied it to my life in works that makes sense yeah <clears throat> it's a familiar path from the newest entrepreneurs to the most to, to I should say it's the same path from individuals who have very little experience in the industry to veterans like yourself in the uh, in what their respective industry making that leap into entrepreneurship it's flat out scary it's an adjustment and a change of everything that you have grown secure uh, secure about you now are taking on all of that but I think also what you're, what you're um, outlining is you're going to start betting on yourself. You're going to start betting on your own ideas. Security now means no one can fire me unless 
I fire myself or I don't fulfill or my plan doesn't sell to anyone. Either way, <laughs> most entrepreneurs find the risk in staying with their current employer. Not that that's bad, right? But some just look at where the, where the real risk is at. So now you started IPL and, you know, then if you if you were working with Tony Robbins, he himself probably even pointed out when you start your organization, what's your purpose? What's your cause? What's your big why as to why you started your organization? Other than solving logistics problems, and we're going to come to that later, what was your driving force? One of the things that um, I, I learned by, by living during my previous uh, corporate years was to work with people. Uh, I come from a a family of very well-known people in, you know, in, in, in small towns, you know, everybody knows each other. We have, my family used to have friends all over the region. So, and, and I was teach to respect people. And, uh, and I came to this uh, region where we are right now. Uh, I, I, I found many, many areas where, you know, people was, were not respected well. Mm. So my first, idea was to build a company to help people support people to grow so we uh, we ended up building a purpose for IPL and 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 the IPL half it's a, became a, a purpose driven company okay. <laughs> purpose driven uh, company okay but, 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 but for real uh, and, and and our purpose say that uh, we want to become a a growth platform for our people and our business partners working in a happy and as well as high performance environment. Hmm. So we, 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 we really are trying to, to, to give all our team the opportunity, Mike, to, to become more. Okay. Uh, probably they won't be able to build their own business, whatever, but we want them to feel that IPL belongs to them. They they do things. They they feel respected. They uh, they can grow. Okay. Uh, and uh, and and but that doesn't mean that you are going to be lazy or you know you need to be a, a high performer and achieve results okay. because we are a service company, right? So uh, uh, we 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 try to to do that every day and uh, and 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 giving the opportunity to as much as people as we can. And 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 last year I I I saw a uh, we, we we had an event in the company. Mm -hmm. And without noticing, I see my dream come true, Mike. Uh, we, we have this event, internal event. Uh, we were just uh, talking about some achievements internally. And then I just look up and all the people and I saw over 120 uh, employees wearing IPL uniforms. Wow. 130. And I say, oh my God, this is what I dreamed. I, I was shocked. I cry at that time. I, I need to be honest. I cry <laughs> because I, I, I didn't realize, Mike. So uh, yeah. I said, okay, I did it. So um, it was impressive for me. Uh, it still is. Um, and, uh, and, and this is it. So um, we, 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 we are practicing the, uh, you know, the, the giving part uh you know and another team knows that I, I i was raised that way i try to put it into my daily you know in my mindset that i need mm -hmm. to help as much as people as i can uh and, and of course we are a business we need to make money right we, need to, right. we got a lot of bills to pay but <laughs> our main driver is right. not the profit our main driver is to be fulfilled as individuals not only okay. not only my partner and I as business as, as owners of the business but everybody so um, uh, we, we we have been working very hard on that Mike okay so let me repeat back to what I think I I hear you saying because yeah. one of my questions is you know when we talk about to become a growing platform for its people in other words your employees yeah. and our customers working on a happy but high performance environment what I think I hear you saying when, in regards to your people, uh, you know, growing, growing their talents, yeah. discovering a talent you might not have known, or if you, or if you find a talent, and it doesn't always have to be in a trans transactional role, uh, you know, area. It, it can be something beyond that. 
growing knowledge of an industry that maybe they had never known existed or how it existed. So you're adding to that growth as well. And, and that kind of, you know, to me says a little bit of, you know, growth of their self-confidence. I'm doing something that I never knew before at a level I never thought I could grow. And if you can impact their growth, that shifts their mindset to a personal growth mindset. And if you can impact them, and if they can feel that, they'll help carry the company's growth yeah. mindset, right? Yeah. So now if I switch that a little bit, well, well, let me come back to that, but let me, let, let me finish this other point. When you say, because you say in here happy, we talked about the employees. What does happy look like? If you're, if I'm a happy employee at IPL, what are some of the things that would make me happy? Well, in in, in our view, uh, and, and probably not, not sure if it's the uh, corporate view of happiness in, in business. For us, happy means um, to be healthy, mm -hmm. uh, to feel secure, you know, to 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 feel that the company cares about you, not by saying it, but, but by doing it, by, by meaning it. Mm -hmm. uh, that, 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 that you, you are, every day, every day you are challenged to your knowledge, to your intellectual uh, thoughts, you know, to, to, to hear your voice, to, that, that, we, that we ask for your opinion. You're right. not a robot, right? Uh, and, and, and that opportunity to, to, or that leads an opportunity to become more, to, to, mm -hmm. to, even though if we don't have or I don't have, uh, uh, you know, uh, education, formal education, I have an experience, I have knowledge, and that can help me to grow, to be more. I, I, I don't need to be all my life doing the mm -hmm. same job. I can as, have uh, 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 other aspirations. And, and for me, you know, uh, that combined with, with being healthy and be secure, that will lead into a, into a happy environment. I, I, I don't mean with that, that we are just smiling and, and, and hugging each other. That, right. That's not, that's not. It's, uh, it's to respect, you know, each other. There is, you know, and, and that's how I, and, and, and I have the, the, the fortune that my partner thinks exactly as, as, as I think. We are not the kings. We are not the, you know, the big guys. No, no, no. We, we, we are equal to everybody in the company. Uh, actually, last year in a in a implementation of a customer, we were working side by side with the with the warehouse team, just moving boxes for days, you know, side by side, sweating mm -hmm. like crazy, you know. But uh, and and that, Mike, we we ended up understanding that the people really have an enormous appreciation for that. We are not just you know pointing or saying or, or do this or do that. Okay, let's do it this side by side. Even though you know there were young guys, we were moving thousands and thousands of, <laughs> of clothing boxes. Uh, we were tired, uh, but we were there, you know, right. doing the same job. And 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 the appreciation you feel from them is incredible. The energy, mm -hmm. the energy that you feel, and people when come to visit us, they say, "I, I feel an energy here." Ooh. People tell us that, like it's okay. impressive, because we we you know we really. You will never find anything related to happiness or respect or anything in in the in the in the walls. No, we. So there's no. We, you don't have any posters. You know. No, nothing. Uh, right. We okay. Do it. We do it. In a, it, it, it is, this is the way we do. Okay. This is the way we operate. In a in a in a full respect. You know, uh, valuating each other mm -hmm. uh, as an individual, respecting your point of view. Right. So uh, and, and I think that. Is, I don't know, at least for us, it's beautiful uh, because people feel that we respect them and, and they feel respected too. And, okay. uh, and, and it's, it's, it's kind of very nice uh, yeah. uh, environment. Well, the part that, that I like that you pointed out, happy doesn't always mean that, you know, we, we sit around the campfire, you know, singing songs, holding hands, and, and we're all laughing. You know, you know that, that's not the happy that we're looking for challenging employees to grow, helping them to grow, giving them a direction. Here's where IPL is going. This is the focus. Here's where we're going. As you're learning a new skill and your knowledge is growing as well, contribute some of these ideas to us. So now, so now we've kind of 
understand what growing means to, you know, to the employees. And like, but like you said, we got to make a profit. No, no one's going to want to do business with us because, you know, we're a wonderful set of, of individuals and, you know, you, you feel the energy here. What does growing mean to IPL? Well, for us, it's, you know, first of all, it's, um, uh, we, we are, we are still a startup. We, we, we just reached the, uh, the two year goal, mm -hmm. uh, a couple of, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so we are still a very young company. Uh, we have grown, of course, in terms of uh, we, 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 we ended up 2020 after the pandemic uh, with 10 employees and uh, we ended up 2021 with 130 something. Wow. Uh, so that's real for us, right? Uh, so yeah. now we, we, are, we are ambitioning to continue because our, our vision, our business vision is pretty clear, Mike. Uh, and, and, and we want to we, we, our vision say that we want to cross the uh, the our borders, you know, our Panama borders, and export our talent. Oh. So in our vision, we are telling our, the team, we want you to become better because you are going to be exported as talent, as a professional. Okay. And that's it. That is written. That is written, and that is a couple of words. The company vision, and 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 we want to become a regional uh, a logistics provider. Uh, following uh, global uh, quality standards, but without losing our essence. And our okay. essence is the people. The, the risk, even though if you go to a new market that they have a different, and we will talk about that later, every country in Latin America is very different. We, we, we are sure that our values will be valid in Panama and in every other country in the region because okay we, we believe that we have a, a strong values and we we want to follow them okay that makes sense i think i see what you're trying to achieve here tell me if i'm if i understand it where ipl wants to grow outside your country boundaries outside the borders of, yeah. of panama yeah in order to achieve that and to export talent you have to foster kind of an environment of personal growth you can't grow if, first of all, if the leadership team doesn't grow personally, professionally, you cannot expect your employees to grow, yes. right? They'll see 100%. that, right? Yeah. But if they can grow outside their own personal borders and their own personal comfort zone, that's what can catapult the company outside of Panama to other countries. That's yeah. what your customers will feel. Is that right? They'll feel yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, and 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 especially in our business today, you know, supply chain is today in every uh, uh, news, and, and and now companies need to be need to have supply chains that are agile, that are resilient. Yeah. And and, and now and we as logistics operators need to be part of those uh, strategies from companies. You need to be flexible. You need to be agile, and 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 that is only done through experience and knowledge and, and strong people and strong teams. And, uh, and uh, it's, it, it's, a, it's a huge challenge right now. Here we have North America, I, I apologize, South, South America. America, Yeah. okay? And if we look closely, right up here is Panama. Yeah. So we have Panama up here. Now, and of course, you you know we've we've got Costa Rica and Mexico you know uh, up north. But you said something I thought was rather important, and that most organizations it's not uncom it's not uncommon for a lot of organizations to misunderstand what it means to ship to South South America. I've got Venezuela, I've got Colombia, I've got uh, Ecuador, I've got Peru, I've got Brazil, Bolivia, Chile. Is the rumor true? demo that each of these territories is in fact a separate country to themselves <laughs> yeah actually you, you, you in this map you're still missing a couple of other countries in this region so uh because okay. in central america and and also are the islands uh, many of the caribbean islands are part of this region as we call so what happens mike is that as you as you presented here, every country in this region is mm -hmm. 
totally different from, from the uh, cultural way, from the, uh, you know, the, there are different languages spoken in the every country. There are very different political ways of running those countries. Every one of those have a complete different rules and regulations that are different to the other. So these are very, uh, this is a 26, I think 28 countries. Uh, and all of those have, you know, their own complexities. So you pull all that together, wow. you know, it's, it's a very complex uh, uh, territory uh, to do business, but it's still a great market and a and great and growing market. Um, so what happens is that typically global companies will, will choose to, okay, if we're going to have a mess, let's do it. Let's have it in the bigger country. So they go to Brazil and they go to Mexico, but the rest, they don't, they don't. They don't. They, they try to avoid going there directly because it's too complex. Mm. Again, you need to pass through different regulations, Ministry of Health, uh, uh, Ministry of Commerce. They are different. Everything is different. The laws are, you know, it's a different thing. So, wh wh what we do in, uh, in, in out of out of the Colon Free Trade Zone in Panama is that we we can help these businesses to go to those markets mm -hmm. in a smarter way. Okay, so if I'm looking at this map, what you're saying, Venezuela, Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, and even, and yes, Brazil, each one of those being a separate country, have separate presidents, separate leaderships, separate laws from one another, separate currencies from one another. Uh, and we haven't even touched on shipping regulations. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Languages, languages, and, and separate languages, cultures, <laughs> cultures. So for example, the, 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 you see Peru and Chile, they are just a border difference, but they are completely different countries. Um, the people, the, 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 uh, the traditions, 100% mm -hmm. different. And that happened if you go come to Panama and then you go to Costa Rica or you go to Guatemala. We, we are high income in that uh, most of us speak Spanish, but even though our, our lingo is different, Right. So we, we got, you know, it's, it's not a single, so to say that chip to South America is not to, it's not like North America. It's a completely different thing. So it's a mistake to say, to believe that is a one single region because it's not. Well, it, explain to me, uh, Demo, with, the, with Panama mm -hmm. as kind of, I'm going to say the distribution hub. Yeah to South America. Explain to me a little bit about what the term that I heard earlier, the Panama free zone and the role that that plays into distribution uh, okay. to South America. Okay, L let me start by saying that, first of all, Panama is the narrowest point in the America's continent, mm. right? Okay. Because of that, we have something that we call our back logistics backbone which is the panama canal of course <laughs> yeah the panama canal give us a tremendous advantage because all the ships going from 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 one ocean to the other have to cross people say that close to five percent of the global economy crossed the, the panama canal oh. so with that said you know the country has has built an infrastructure around the canal, ports, airports, railways, uh, special economic zones, mm -hmm. and this this specific one where I where I am at is called the Colon Free Trade Zone. The Colon Free Trade Zone is a special economic zone that was that was built or created back in 1949. Okay, at that time, Panama had this. American uh, 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 um, part of it, right? Um, we were, there, there was the, the, the old canal zone, there was a, a territory that was owned by the United States, was a, like a country within the country, right? Okay. So in that specific zone or area, the, uh, the laws that rules that state was the law of the state of Louisiana. <laughs> so Okay. Back in 1947 and 48, the economy of the city of Cologne was really depending on the uh, on the ships that uh, uh, were related to the, the, the Second World War. So after the war, the city of Cologne became into a depression. 
So a group of entrepreneurs were trying to find a way to build something to generate jobs. So they found or they hear about this law in the state of Louisiana that was the law of the free zone. So they okay. get that law, they just get it translated. They say, okay, we were gonna do a build a free zone and they did it. Uh, and that group was led by a, the, president of the, the president of the country at the time. So they built this free zone and the purpose of the free zone is to create jobs, not to, to get taxes. Okay. So with that law, from that time, it started becoming more, more and more attractive for companies. So, and I need to say this, a lot of people say that this is a, 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 a tax haven, mm, but the reality tax haven. is that, yeah, tax haven, yeah. So, but the reality is that that was, it's not the purpose of it because the purpose of this zone is to do business for the region, not for Panama, it's oh. for the region because Panama is, is still a very small country. We are close to 4 million people, 4.2, 4 I think. So we are one of the smallest country in Latin America. So, but out of Panama, you serve Colombia, which is a 50 million market or Chile or Dominican Republic or Guatemala or other countries that are way bigger than Panama. So this free zone, the, the purpose is to serve the countries and the region. So we got the, the, the chips coming from all over the world, mainly from China, of course. Okay. Uh, and then we receive the goods. And then we, from here, we re-export the chips, taking advantage of the current frequencies of the canal. Because what this gives us is uh, our reliability uh, in service. We, 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 we have resilience okay. because we, you, the, the, this never stops because, because the ships doesn't stop crossing and, and coming. So all these international ports that are private, so we don't have these you know, strikes, these kind of things, uh, uh, move really, really in a, in a very secure way, the products. So a lot of multinationals, actually, I think at least seven or eight of the top 10 global pharmaceutical companies have their regional inventories seated in Panama, in the free zone. Wow. So, you know, and, and companies like Pfizer, for example, have been in that free zone for over 70 years. 70? 70 years, six, seven, zero. And wow. yeah, yeah. And, uh, and many of the companies, uh, you know, the Japanese electronic companies uh, started in the 70s, in the, in the 70s in the free zone, the Zonies, the Kenwoods, the uh, Panasonics, all those Japanese companies start their growth in Latin America out of Panama, out of that free zone. So uh, there are still all the sporting good shoes, the Nikes, the Adidas, the New Balances, Skechers, all those big names, Under Armour, all those have the regional inventories in the free trade zone. So each one of those large companies has, yeah. is it safe for me to say, well, they've got products and distribution centers in Panama? Yeah. Mainly run by by three PLs. Uh, some of them belong to them, but okay. uh, the, the the important thing is that they run their businesses in this region out of Panama. So, what is the advantage of of working through Panama? Why don't I just go um, and, and send products to the you know to these different or uh, to these different countries? What's the problem with just going to these different? These different countries and the ben and as opposed to what's the benefit of some of the things that IPL, the problems that IPL sir, uh, solves yep. of going through Panama and the free zone. Certainly, there are there are some products that are sold in big quantities that you can ship a full container of one product from the manufacturing plant to the country, and that happens. But in reality, there are many other products that cannot be uh, bought into that bigger amounts. And mm -hmm. the other thing is that, you know, global companies have global vendors. So they have vendors all over the world. So a single vendor of product cannot say, send or ship one single product to all the region because there are small markets. So what happens in Panama is that we mix or we consolidate product from different vendors from all the world and we build a new container mixed for example, IPL have a customer, it's a, it's a, it's a well-known fashion company that we receive products from, from different plants in China. And, and, and they produce, you know, 
a, let's say there is one vendor that only produce belts and the other just shoes and the other just hats, oh. let's say. So when we ship that product, those products to the stores, we need to fill an order that is, you know, the t-shirt black uh, S or M and XL, you know, and, and in certain quantities. So we need to build that, those orders. To okay. fulfill the, the to fulfill what that specific store is looking for, that is impossible to be done on the manufacturing plants because there is not, not one manufacturing plant, I don't know, twenty or thirty, right? So we give a service helping the customer just to consolidating products just to meet the demand. Mm. And the other thing is that we also uh, our main business actually is to perform value add services for those products. <clears throat> that means that. Uh, for example, for this specific customer, we we put uh, the price tickets uh, in the in the currency of the country where we are shipping to. We put the uh, the anti theft alarms. Uh, we even though in other countries uh, are required, you know, you, you you mentioned about the the rules of regula import regulations. There are yeah. some countries that require a sued label with the information of the importer of records in that specific country. That is impossible to be done on China in a manufacturing plant because it's a fraction of the of the of the all the order. So that fraction needs right. to be processed. So what we do, we have a team of uh, a, a, a team member with sewing machines. They are just sewing labels, uh, printed with the number of the number of uh, the importer of record, the physical address, and the name. Because in the customs uh, uh, authority in that specific country, they will check. If that product doesn't have that label sued because it's textile, it, it won't allow that product to be imported. If we say non-textile, need to be have a um, adhesive label. So it's a lot of a lot of services that we perform in order to help our customers to cross those non-tariff barriers. Wow! And put the product in the hand of the end customer. That's what we do. That's our our main area of expertise. So if I understand what you're saying, Demo, that if I owned a retail fashion store mm -hmm. here in the United States, but part of my inventory is being manufactured in China or Vietnam, and this inventory that I'm, you know, that, that is being, you know, accumulated that needs to get to South America, they would to build that order because we've got shirts here in the states made in the USA, we've got belts possibly made, um, you know, let's say in Vietnam, we've got shoes that are made in China, but each one of these end of, uh, so, you know, somewhat individual apparels need to be built in order. One order to get to my retail outlets in South America. So they would come to you. And now that you've built the order, you've got to look through to make sure that each of those items are correctly labeled and well, I, I, to capture it, demo, meet the regulations of each of those countries. And that requires, even if they have to sew a tag in, you're, you do that as well. We, we do that. And another important topic is that in this free zone of, it's free, so there is no tax. There is no import tax. There is no export tax. Wow. There's no sales tax for re-exports. So what happens is that once you put a product into a market, you need to pay the taxes. And if you are not selling that product in a specific market, you, you want to re-export it, right? But it's almost impossible. The customs regulations in almost all Latin America, including Panama, not, not the free zone, but Panama, the, uh, you know, the fiscal territory, is very hard to re-export something that already paid mm. taxes. Right? So the, the, it takes a lot of time and a lot of money. So it's not manageable so what happens is that our customers they bought product not for a specific market they bought for a region okay that's why it's regional inventory it's not local inventory so right. they they play with the demand whatever that specific country wants to or or, or they experience a a growing all the sales of that specific product then they ship it they don't want to ship that, a product that won't be sold because they will lose it. They will need to scratch, uh, uh, scrap that. So, and, 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 and that is possible because going a little back on the connectivity on the frequencies, because 
you can build an order and you can have it in Colombia in 24 hours, or you can have it in Peru in uh, 72 hours, right? So right. you can do you can do all that, but you can also put it in that market pretty close, pretty soon. It's not shipping from China, a month and something uh, from distance. It's days, so months over days. So Panama, it's a um, a pretty simple place to pivot your product, mm. your demand to meet the, whatever the demand is. So, so let me bring that map up again here real quick. Yeah. So here we've got the different, is it safe to say the different regions within South America? Mm -hmm. So I've got Venezuela, I've got Colombia, we've got Peru, Ecuador, Brazil. Now, let's say I've got, uh, I own the retail outlet and we've got three, uh, you know, four different or, th or three different t-shirts that we want to sell, but we don't know how they're going to sell and we don't know who's going to buy. We've got, you know, let's say we've got like a, a red, you know, we've got a blue, we've got a yellow, we've got black, right? But we don't know who's going to buy what or what's going to resonate within these different countries. What do I do? Well, the, the strategy that we, that we see from our customers, Mike, is that they send a sample to okay. every market and they wait for the reaction. Because a product that people in Peru loves, people in Colombia hates, same product. So when, they, when, when these customers, they, they, they see a product that is a hit in a market, then they start selling it out of Panama, not from the country. Because oh, they have a safety inventory in Panama. Again, okay. you don't know where that product is going to be a hit. Probably, probably it's not even in South America, probably it's in the Dominican Republic. The people there love that blue shirt. So they want thousands of it. So you just put an order to the Dominican Republic and IPA will pack and ship and you will be there in four days. Right? Okay. The product that you thought originally or your planning team thought that in Chile was going to be a hit, but they hate it. Okay. <laughs> it's an example, but but more or less happened that way. Okay. All right. So it's almost kind of a, a, um, a, a market test. The ability to hold inventory in one central location, not have to pay taxes on it, import taxes, and to see and to find out what will sell. And, and, and this is not only taxes, Mike, because if if you have a partner, maybe the partner will charge you, but if you set up your own warehouse in, that, in, in every country, mm -hmm. then you have another problem. You, ha you have landed costs, you, ha you have uh, uh, expenses, to, and a product that you're not selling it. So why to have that? So you, you rely on a partner, mm -hmm. and you put the product into a safe place that you can move it. And not only, to be honest, is the, the the capacity is not only to distribute to Latin America. I have myself shipped product to the to the to to, to the um, Middle East. Oh, okay. Because the inventory was sitting here, and my customer found a customer in Dubai. They just ship it. Okay. Because there are frequencies. Yes. You can ship to Africa. You can ship to Europe. You can ship to the U.S. Because you can reach all those markets. Because we got the frequencies, we got the ships, is there. The okay. Capacity, the capacity is there. Okay. So you would use it if you need it. Okay. So Panama j doesn't deal just with South America. Of course, it's, let's say, 95%. Right. But we also serve the US when needed. We also set ship to Europe and, and to other countries when needed. But the reality is that our main markets are, you know, um, getting your map. Brazil is not served commonly from Panama because Brazil is too big mm -hmm. and they have uh, they, they, a solo market like, like Mexico. But all the rest are, are, pr are pretty well served out of Panama. Okay. So, and it sounds like most of the uh, organizations that you focus on, what are some of the organizations, the, the, um, your market that you focus on, size of companies? Do, do, does somebody have to be a, a part of the uh, Fortune 500 to get your attention? No, not really. Uh, my experience, to be honest, was on those kind of companies. 
Okay. Uh, for the 500, you know, uh, I was really uh, expert on, on, on dealing with those, com those companies. But, but now in IPL, we are not focused on that also. We are mainly focused on mid-size or small size companies that want to do business in the region. They have customers, they, they, they have a good product that this market want, but they don't know how to do it. They don't, they don't have the, uh, the mm. experience. So we, we find this, there is a market, very interesting market uh, of uh, you know, business owners that they need uh, 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 an advice like we can do, uh, we okay. can get them because we have all the experience doing this. So uh, a small company, a mid-sized company, uh, you name probably, uh, I don't know, uh, what, what, what is the, uh, the, uh, the typical size you, you, you believe? Well, I, I would think that, that if you're talking, you know, small to mid-sized organizations, you're looking anywhere from, I'd say employee, employee size, maybe to 50 to 300 people. Yeah, 100%. In, in that range. Revenue, uh, you know, 50 to close to 200 million in revenue. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and let me explain you why. If you are probably bigger than that, you probably have a strong relation or a contract with a global triple. Mm. And when you're looking for service, you are going to go with them. And then probably they will call me, but uh, to, to, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, we, 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 that's, that's one of our business strategies. We, we work for Global Triples also as, okay. as partner. But it's easier for us to talk to another business owner. Uh, they, they, give, they, they tell us their challenges uh, and, and they feel more comfortable talking with people like them. Okay. But we have the expertise, we have the network, we have all the relationships in, this, in the area to not only to, to be in Panama, but to make the international transportation, the customs processes, and also the uh, the door-to-door -door delivery in Latin America. So what we offer is that it's an it's a end-to-end service to, to these kind of companies, you know, a small manufacturing company out of, I don't know, Georgia. Uh, okay. they, they, they have a beautiful, I don't know, furniture products they want to sell, or okay. from Texas. And they have a customer in Peru or in Colombia. So, we can help those guys. We can help them uh, because we exactly have the the way to do it in a in a in a not expensive way. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, in a secure platform with all the visibility that the business require, so they can run their business in a remote control way from from wherever they have their their manufacturing plant or their, their business in the U.S. or in Canada. Uh, we can perform. Actually, we don't have any company uh, representatives in our company. All of businesses run through systems and through, uh, you know, uh, uh, platforms. They know exactly what is going on. Okay. So you're giving these small, mid-sized organizations an opportunity to compete yeah. uh, in, in South America with the Fortune 500. And you yeah. know, from what you're telling me, it almost sounds like the reason some of the, you know, the larger organizations I, I'm hesitant to say dominate the market is quite simply because the small to medium size don't know how or are not familiar with the complexities to get their product to those markets, those different countries, regions, yeah. but you can now give them access to South America, to the different regions at a competitive price, and they can now open up new markets. Do I get it? Yeah, you, you get it pretty right. And, and other thing that is that those global companies if they want to go to market or uh, they want to do something new, they just call a, a big four consultant, right? And they, they have the money to afford a study. But a mid-sized or small company cannot do that. So right. what we do, Mike, is that we gave them the advice probably will be more accurate mm -hmm. than these you know, top global consultant firms because we are here. We know right. this market better than anybody else. We know, you know, we know what we're doing. So and, and we don't charge for that. Our, our selling style is consulting selling, right? We, we, yeah. we, we understand the problem. Uh, I, I just had a meeting today with a company, you know, a pretty big company that they, they want to grow in this region, but they don't know where to start with. And, and they choose just the wrong place to start. They chose uh, the wrong place? <laughs> yes. Okay. So we noticed, we heard that when they, they were telling us that 
okay, we did that because of this. Say so it was a big mistake, of course, but we can fix it. We can help uh, this company to grow their business. A very well-known company, <laughs> and um, and and you know, this is beautiful for us. This, though, this is the kind of customers we love because we can add value, Mike. We can okay. help them to grow because it's, it's our purpose, our, our, our mission to help our customers to grow. And, and, and if they grow, we grow. So I, I, I'm really happy with these opportunities when, when I, I understand that they don't know what they need for grow. Mm -hmm. So I just need the vision. I just need what they want and I can help. Well, well Demo, let, let me call on your experiences. We kind of pivot here a little bit as to what's happening with the supply chain now. Christmas is over, all right? Mm -hmm. I'm sure we all got our, our packages uh, have been delivered. So now that Christmas is over, the supply chain is miraculously fixed. Is that right? Or are we st <laughs> we're still experiencing some problems? What are some of the problems that you, you still see might even be getting worse in the supply chain? There are many problems right now. Uh, there's still a lot of congestion in the West Coast U.S., Okay. I think it's close to 80 to 90 chips outside the San Pedro Bay wow. uh, right now um, because all what is happening in the, in the, in the West Coast, uh, the U.S. Um, multimodal system, you know, have complexities all over, you know, lack of drivers, lack of trucks, lack of uh, uh, facilities. So there are many problems right now. And, and what happens is that whatever happens in the U.S., you know, reflects in what's happening in, in, in the rest of this, this uh, uh, region, the continent. Um, for, for Panama, and I need to be a little uh, uh, um, uh, 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 real on this, the Panama Canal have extraordinary numbers. The, the ports of Panama have extraordinary numbers because we don't have the problems that you have in the West Coast. So hmm. many shippers, uh, US shippers, are diverting cargo out of out of uh, uh, LA Long Beach and the West Coast to move it through the expanded canal to go to New York, New Jersey, Charleston, Savannah, Houston, Miami, etc. So the 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 last year the canal have a record of transits, hmm. and, and 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 the ports in Panama have a record of con transshipment containers of over eight million TUs. So it's a huge growth for the uh, logistics system in Panama because of what is going on in the U.S. But other problem we are facing is the uh, the lack of bookings, which are the, uh, the the reservations for moving cargo out of China, mm -hmm. uh, the expensive rates that they're pretty expensive rates. Uh, this is not going down as fast as we all thought or, or we all want. So it's pretty expensive. So we are seeing all this inflation cost by all these problems. Okay. Um, uh, all the problem that we are facing is uh, what we call in the industry, the bullwhip effect, which is- The bullwhip you know, effect. Bullwhip effect, yeah. Uh, uh, and, and that happened when, you know, th these cycles, you know, in the, in the, in the demand and the, in the uh, consumption, companies, sometimes they get out of product and sometimes they get a lot of product and they cannot oh. sell it. So right now we are seeing Warehouses full of products that cannot be sell, sold uh, mm. in, in, in a short term. Others, other companies cannot get the products here. Uh, for example, I have a customer, a tech, high tech company. They, they, they need as much as uh, uh, electronic equipment as they can, but they can't. The uh, suppliers cannot because there are not microchips, enough chips to, to fill the orders. Uh, so they don't have enough product to sell. They have the customers, they have the market, but they don't have the product. Others have all the product that have the market. So it's real a, uh, a big mess. <laughs> <laughs> well, some of the, the factors that are contributing, you know, to, to our obstacles here in the States is labor shortage. I, I should say a, a tight labor market. Yeah. Um, you know, we shut down, you know, everybody had to go home. And the side note here, I don't know if you guys caught this, but uh, Demo started his company just prior to the COVID shutdown, the global shutdown. Yeah. So just as he had started his organization, IPL, they now have to go into shutdown. Well, let, let me tell you a, a small story. I ended up my job 
or my assignment in my company in March 2020. So when I was supposed to sit down in my new desk in my company, we were in, lo in total lockdown. So I, I was never able to sit down in my new company. <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah. And, 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 and at that time, my partner was running it. So, you know, you cannot imagine all those uh, 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 thinking in my head. Say, oh, my God, did I did the right thing? Yeah. You know, <laughs> but um, but, you know, I, I was ready for that and, and, and I crossed that. So, yes, we 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 operate uh in in from from home we are a warehousing business so for us mike it's not that easy as we're from home right probably i can do it and my partner can do it but we are a service company we need to touch the product you cannot mm -hmm. do that through zoom you need to touch it you need to be there you need right. to touch it unload took the product so for us you know the, the world the the uh the uh, office house balance that doesn't work we need to be there so it's different. It's different. Yeah, it's different. And if you need people to be there, like I was uh, before, I pivoted to you know, uh, you know, to, to the situation when you started during the the beginning of the, the pandemic. Yeah. I think something also that that we have to look at if you need people on site here in the states for multiple reasons, organizations are finding it difficult to find employees to fill positions. Yeah, and is. And like you said, drivers, shortage of drivers, uh, you know, it's tight capacity market. In Panama, has this affected you? Does that affect the supply chain in moving goods and services to Panama, a tight labor market? No, not really. Even though we also have government support for people that lose the jobs and all that, uh, here was a little different. And, and let me tell you this, the uh, labor shortage of, uh, it's, it's not only the U.S., you can find that all over Latin America uh, because it's happening everywhere. So uh, the uh, the uh, government's helping or giving you know allowances to to people without jobs is all over. So in our case, what we what we were really really uh, lucky, we are so grateful for that. We 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 opened this operation and uh, we found a lot of people we that they didn't have a job, they lost their jobs. Mm. So we were able to find. Uh, 150 people uh, in a week. Uh, wow. Wow. Yeah. 150 people in one week. Yeah. My, my HR manager is a queen. <laughs> 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 yeah, she's the best. Uh, yeah. So uh, we, we were able to build that team. You know, uh, people with experience uh, have worked in other companies like us or even indirectly with uh, uh, business owners, operators. So we, we were able to fill those uh, uh, positions pretty, pretty fast. And um, it was a beautiful experience, Mike. I need to tell you this. Uh, we, 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 we hire people that had, at a time, a year without having a, a, a formal job. A year. So they had and, been out of work for a year. A year. And, due and, to the and, pandemic, and, and you helped find yes. them a job with your and, organization. And mostly, mostly of our employees are women. Okay. Yeah, it's uh sixty percent, sixty five percent of our labor is women because we 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 touch you know clothing and, and you know men is we are too you know uh, uh, we are not too, we are not delicate so you need delicate <laughs> hands and very careful hands we are not like that so these ladies uh, were a lot with you know with families they have kids and uh, we, we 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 started paying them in cash because they didn't, they didn't have bank accounts. Wow. So uh, we, we found out, hey, we, we cannot get a check. We cannot get a deposit because we don't have any. We, we, I, I have been without a job a year. So what a problem. So we need to get cash. <laughs> you know, for all these people, we were, it, was, it was a crazy times. But the, 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 the most beautiful experience when would they get that money, Mike. Yeah. The first salary in a year, you know, people crying in front of you. This mm. is wow. most, most fulfilling experiences because you were able to help that person somehow uh, without a secure job. You know, uh, they, they, you know the, the gratefulness they express was everything for us. Wow. So uh, it's beautiful. And, and, you know, we are really grateful for that opportunity, Mike, to, to, mm -hmm. to, to build our dream helping others.
Wow, that's exciting. Yeah. And that's a job well done. That's a job well done. And that uh, that being your, your primary purpose to provide, to help people grow personally, well, professionally, that providing confidence that can't help but lead over into their personal life. Uh, you, the, you know, the, the service you're providing in solving these complex problems in moving products into South America is beyond recognition. And believe me, Demo gave me a couple of other examples of just simply, uh, you know, working with a well-known computer manufacturer, moving laptops into South America and components coming from various countries, having to assemble them through IPL, <laughs> having to assemble some of those products at IPL and well, then sending that, that, them into the market. Yeah, that, 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 the, the, the computer manufacturer was not in IPL, was in LSV, my former company, but, but yeah, the same, you know, uh, we, getting, getting those computers from China and those printers from Brazil and those uh, peripherals from, I don't know, Malaysia, Singapore, it's the same, happened the same. Now, now in IPL, we are we are doing, for example, for a auto park a customer, they are bringing products again from different manufacturing plants in Asia. So we are just putting all that together and building orders. So it's it's the same, it's, you know, it's, it's pretty exciting because you can help this business grow. Yeah. Speaking Through of this. business, um, what are some of the industries that uh, IPL focuses on or that you've had experience in helping? Right now, we are focusing on fashion apparel. Of course, fashion. it's, a, it's a, yeah, the fashion industry, the uh, the high tech and telecom industry. Okay. Uh, we are doing a lot of retail and uh, and uh, e-commerce, and uh, and also industrial. Uh, the industrial uh, segment, we are helping a couple of industrial companies, uh, and uh, you know the hardware stores, the kind of things. Uh, we we put it in industrial uh, or, or retail. So we are not focusing right now on any related to pharmaceutical uh, or human consumption products. Mm -hmm. um, we, we are not. So in the, the rest, we are doing mainly everything else. Okay. Well, Demo, congratulations on two years. Congratulations on becoming an entrepreneur. And most importantly, thank you for helping provide jobs and security for people in your region and on a global scale. For helping to solve some of the, the supply chain issues, moving products throughout North and, and South America, being able to provide solutions to that as well. Demo, if people want to get in touch with you at IPL, uh, what's the best way to get in touch with you? Okay, they can go to our website, which is 3plpanama.com. Okay. Uh, yes, three, the number three, uh, plpanama.com. Uh, or they can find me on LinkedIn. Um, I, I try to be as active as I can in, in LinkedIn. Um, the most experienced or demo page you will find me. Uh, and also IPL have their own LinkedIn page, um, uh, page on LinkedIn. So uh, they can find us there. It's pretty okay. easy to, to get in touch. All right. And I'll provide that contact information as well at the end here. Demo, thank you very much for telling us the demo uh Perez story for the IPL, uh, the start of, become, of, of IPL becoming an entrepreneur. Thank you very much for explaining to us the complexity of South America and how you can solve that problem and for the ideas and thoughts and how to uh, alleviate some of the supply chain issues. Guys, I want to thank all of you for once again tuning in and watching. We appreciate it. Until next time, I'm Mike Temple. Thank you very much.